Welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another beautiful day here in WeWAC, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. I'm going to be taking you on a 35-minute flight from WeWAC out to Malamunda, Papua New Guinea. And it's just nestled right in the edge of the mountains, so we'll be flying across the Sepik Plains to get out there. So let's go ahead and get started and be on our way. Igniter's on, our aqua fuel pump on, and our low start. Everything's going up, oil pressure's coming up, the NG's over 14%. Introduce our low idle. And then our ITT is going to start coming up. I'm just watching the trend of it to see how fast it's coming up and see if it looks like it's going to go into the yellow or not, but it didn't, never has. But it was going to watch it, so generator on, alternator on, aux bus on, our V2 tracker is on, our prop forward. All right, we've got 880 pounds of fuel on board today. And my cargo is 429 kgs. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I've got two seats on board, so I'm gonna come down here. So I've got two seats, so I've got um, six seats off, so minus 76 kgs for my equipment. I'm 85 with myself and my bag. We have 880 kgs and I have 429 kgs of 880 pounds of fuel and 429 kgs of cargo. So the number I'm looking for is this packs and cargo pound. That's what I put into my GPS. It does all the calculations, converts everything between pounds and kgs, if you're wondering. The GPS only allows us to put in pounds and fuel, not kgs. All right, get our taxi light on. We're heading out and uh, call for our flight following. Bidang 1267, November Tango, Kilo Taxi. Tango Morning again, November Tango Kilo, WeWAC, Alamunda, 1 POB. Tango Kilo, Petro Taxi, November Tango. November Tango Kilo. All stations, WeWAC 1267, Kodiak, November Tango Kilo, backtrack in runway 10 for departure to the south, not above 8,000. All stations, WeWAC. All right, checking off to my left and my right. Don't see any traffic, and they just said there was no traffic, but I'm gonna check anyways. Strobes on, landing light on, and pulse light on as we do come onto the runway. So the place that we're heading out to today, Malamunda, um, the runway is like a rock kind of like shelf, and it does have grass on it, but it's super slippery every time I go out there, it seems. They did have a lot of rain last night, so again, Today will be super slippery, so something I'm going to be keeping in mind is just hydroplaning how much water is actually on it. It is a little bit of a slope, but for some reason the water just sits on top of the ground even though it's on a slight hill. So stay tuned to the end so you don't miss out um, watching me more or less slide down this mountain runway. Um, but yeah, it's a 35 minute flight out there, so just a quick little hop. All right, fuel cap. And selectors are done. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my TAWs on for takeoff and our flight out there, in case I forget for some reason. Our controls are good, our switches pretty good. I'm gonna check my weight. We're 6310 right now, so rotate at 59. And come back in at 69 if we need to set up our V-Ref for that, so. All right, flaps are set, indicated and verified. We're not 50 knots by the first taxiway, we will abort, full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, cut off, pull off, shut off if we are going off. After takeoff, pitch for 85, consider EPL, consider feather, left hand turn to the beach, 80 full flaps, emergency button, and make my mayday call on 1267. All right, igniters, lights, bypass, done, SAR is done, we got our flight plan in there. It's 32 degrees on the ground, so 1590 for 1540. Ignition condition, flap 20, fuel in, harnesses, checklist complete, rotate 59. All right, set up my torque at 1540, and as we get going, it continues to rise, airspeed is alive. There's 59 and rotate.
I'm pitching to about the seven and a half degree mark. That's gonna give a nice angle of climb out and it's gonna get me over 85 knots where I can start reducing my flaps. As I reduce the flap, the nose is gonna wanna come back down. I'm gonna have to get a little more back pressure, maybe I'll do a little bit of trim. It has auto trim. I just have to give it a tiny bit more after the auto trim. Then over 90 knots, we're gonna go zero degrees of flaps and climb out at about 100 knots. I've got full right rudder trim in right now, and because uh, this does have quite a bit of torque pull to it. As our speed is going to increase, I'm going to start reducing some of that right rudder trim as we are climbing out. All right, now that I'm at an altitude, I'm bringing my prop back down to 2,000 RPM. As I do that, my ITT is going to also just drop on down from 740. Should drop down to 720 if it's set up properly, but clearly mine was not, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it down another 10. 10 degrees Celsius down to 720. All stations. WEWAC, November Tango Kilo, departed runway 10, outbound track 197 on climb 8000. All stations, WEWAC. Midday 1267, November Tango Kilo departure. Okay, no, go ahead. November Tango Kilo departed, WEWAC 0 Niner on climb not above 8000, estimating Malamanda 45. Midtown Kilo 8000. Uh, remain here, call again Malamanda, secondly VHF 1285, and uh, primary will be 6598. 1285 or 6538, Malamanda, November Tango Kilo. So he just gave me two different frequencies. The first one was the HF, which is what we're going to set up in here on our actual GPS. The second one was our, our, our VHS, I should say. And the second one was our HF, which is what we set on this little device down here. So HF here in PNG doesn't work awesome. It works some days awesome, but some days it just doesn't work at all. So I prefer to use my VHS as much as I can, but then some days you can't get that either. So, all right, now that we're more or less out of the circuit, we're gonna go ahead and turn our landing light or taxi light off, bypass our in the engine inlet back to normal out of bypass, and our igniters are turned off. And I'm just gonna pitch for, I usually just do VY, just because I like to get up and out of the kind of humid air up to the hotter air. Cruise climb on a Kodiak is 115 knots, is what we use, and VY is going to be 99 knots, and VX is going to be 73 knots with 20 degrees of flaps. So I climb out just to VY, 99 knots, it gets me up to the altitude as fast as I can, and then it starts cooling off, and, and I'm not dying from the heat exhaustion which actually does help with fatigue levels as the day goes on. So I'm going to put this little map here. Well, I'm going to. I am putting this little map, this moving map, as we go out, out to Malamunda. Some of you guys had wanted to know what kind of charts we use and stuff. We do have kind of whack charts, a little bit different than the U.S. And so I'm going to just follow along with the breadcrumbs so you can kind of see exactly where I'm flying and exactly where I'm going. So if I keep zooming out, you guys can see we have this chart just overlaid over top. This is for flight. And what I've done to get this in here is we had about five charts that were all scanned in really high res or taken a picture of and then put in the computer. I put all of those together in Photoshop and then geo-synced it all together so that I could use it. Let me get the autopilot on. Um, so that I could use it in ForeFlight. I imported those maps into ForeFlight. So we don't use these for like, uh, like, we're not flying by these. We fly everything off of our GPS. But this is just a really nice visual indication. And also just sometimes if it's poor weather and you're coming into a valley, you're not sure if it's this river or the next river over, this is a really quick way to just say, oh, it's the next river over and here's where my airplane is and just verifying what I see here is what I'm seeing out there as well. So if you guys do like this map, leave a comment down below. If you guys think it's kind of annoying to have it in the screen, also leave a comment down below. I would like to hear your thoughts. Again, I'm making these videos for you guys, so 
if you guys don't enjoy them, well then I'm going to change something so that you guys do enjoy it. Alright, so I need to set this up properly because I have the wrong place in there. There we go. Now it actually looks like I'm going where I'm supposed to be going. So on my flights today, uh, I've got a pretty normal day today and some of you guys have asked what a normal actually day looks like for me. So we start work at 7 and I took off at 8 and I should be finishing around 2.40 today on all my flights. So I've got 683 nautical miles for all of my flying today. So to give you a reference, that would be if I took off out of Los Angeles and flying east, I would basically get about two-thirds of the way through New Mexico if I just went in a straight line. So about a third of the way across um, the U.S. if I was just going a straight line across from L.A. all the way over to South Carolina, basically. All right, that beep is letting me know that it's 200 feet more to go to my desired altitude of 8,000 feet. So this is my autopilot. Um, when I was climbing, I had my vertical speed button as well as my, al uh, my altitude select button together. And it is going to level off, which is doing right now at 8,000. And then I have it on heading mode right now because I wasn't, I took off and then I wasn't really connected to my um, actual course. So I'm just flying my heading, but then I also have it on nav GPS. And so once I get, I don't know, fairly close, probably like less than a mile, probably a half a mile, which I'm now 0.9 miles from actually connecting to my course, it's gonna automatically connect and make all the turns, actually connect up with my course. All right, we are at 8,000 feet now, and my airspeed is over 130 indicated. So this thing pretty much just flies around at 130 knots indicated. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my power lever here, bring it back, and my torque is going to come on back to 1250. My ITT is going to come on down, usually around most of our planes, we have three of them, usually around 686, so this one's running a little bit cooler than normal. And I'm going to bring my prop right back down to 2,000 RPM. Then I'm just going to verify that my fuel flow is under 320, because we do all of our flight planning with 320 pounds of fuel per hour. So if I was flying low out here, then I would basically have to reduce my power so that my fuel flow is just right at 320. If you guys are wondering what I actually fly out on most of my flights, let me just show you today. I'm just flying, I'm just flying out a bunch of cargo for some local people out of Malamunda. So we've got some like ramen noodles, we've got Coke, we've got soap. Those are just like the essentials. We've got 10 fish, things like that. So just basic stuff. I'm going out there to pick up someone and bring them back. But on my load out there, I'm just bringing some of this stuff as well. We are now 20 minutes out. And I'm just going to go ahead and go over my strip chart with you guys. The elevation is 2,150 feet. So what I can do is set up my altitude select here at 1,000 foot above. So I could go 3,100. And what if I wanted to do it, if I could actually get it exactly where I want, is I can hit my timer reference and come down here to my minimums, which is what you'd use if you're shooting an approach. But what we can do is you could set it up 500 feet, your barrel 500 feet above your turning final if you wanted to, and then Betty would say minimums over your headset and remind you that you're at 500, which is really nice if you are at a place that doesn't have really good visual indi indicators showing you exactly how hard you are on your altitude, where exactly you want to turn. So this one is a bit odd um, because, so we'll be landing a runway uh, 08. It's a one-way strip, so there's just mountains all on this side. You'll see as we get closer. And so I'm going to fly, I'm coming in from the north, and I'm going to fly overhead, come back around, fly over top of the field. That way I'm going to let them know that I'm there. And that way, all the kids and whatnot can get off the airstrip. And the pattern is kind of 
you go and then you just kind of follow a ridge. Once we get closer, you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll follow this ridge in. So final is way out. It's kind of like right after you turn base, it's kind of like on your final leg where you kind of come in at an angle and then just shortly turn right before completely final. If I do need to go around, I'll brief this a little bit before I want to get closer just so it's fresh in my mind. It's pretty much kind of along the ridge and that's a really uh, early committal. So we're fairly light today, so even if I was heavy, I could probably go around just fine the very second I'm turning to line up on my numbers. And just right before the river, just because I am light. But if I was heavy, then I would have to call committed way out. One of my committed is that we're committed to land because of the weight of the aircraft and because of how close the train is. The cameras don't really show exactly how close it is committed to land is me saying I have to land no matter what I have to land because I don't have enough power and enough maneuverability to get out of the valley safely oh it's 530 meters long 4% slope it is just grass it says grass and gravel but it is just grass but it's a really really hard it's like a, a really really hard ground so the water doesn't get absorbed into the ground very well. So it's extremely slippery, and last night they had a lot of rain. So just looking out there right now, there's a lot of clouds out there. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my top of descent so that I'm reminded on when I need to go down so I don't have to do the math. So I'm gonna come over here to flight plan. On my altitude, I'm going to select 3,100 feet. That's the altitude I want to go to. And then come down here to the VS target, and I'm going to put 800 feet per minute. And what that does is it puts that little uh, top of descent mark. And once I get to that point, then Betty's going to remind me top of descent, and then I need, then I know I need to go down. Also, what I can do right now is head over to my AUX page, and that's going to give me my aircraft weight. So we're 6,190 pounds right now. We have 15 minutes, so that's burning about 100 pounds of fuel because we burn 320 an hour. So actually a little bit less than that. But we're going to do it at 6,100 as our landing weight. So on our chart down here, 6,100 is going to give us closest to uh, takeoff is 57 and landing is at 67. So I'm going to put my landing speed, my VREF, in as 67. All right, my fuel is just a tiny bit out of sync. So what I'm going to do is just turn off my right fuel so it's only burning off of my left tank. And then to remind myself to actually turn it back on is I'm going to turn my timer right here to, I would say, about five minutes. The distance it is, is would be about five minutes. So start that, and what that's going to do is it's going to make my little alerts thing here flash when the timer goes out. It doesn't ding. I wish I could set it up to where it actually dings, but it just sits there and flashes. So it's a good reminder for myself to turn the fuel back on. Uh, there have been wrecks. In history past, uh, many Welcome pilots. Marine, for taxi, no direct reported. Call again and departure. Or people have crash landed because they forgot to turn their fuel back on, even though they still had fuel in their tanks. So, so as I'm getting closer, I'm still 20 miles out. I do see a lot of clouds out there, right on top of the mountain. And like I was just saying, there's a ridge that goes all the way along it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fly to the opening of the mouth of the valley over here. So I'm gonna center up my bug, hit my heading mode on my autopilot, and then vertical track. crank it over about 10 degrees. That was Betty letting us know it's time to go down. So I have a preset. I wanna go down to 800 feet per minute. So more than likely, I could probably get in through this way. That's the normal way you go. If you just go straight, you can kind of head in around the corner around a little bit, but just because the clouds are sitting on top of the mountains, I don't want to head to that end and then not be able to get in for some reason, and then I have to go all the way back down to the other end of the valley to be able to get in. 
because that's the opening that goes really, really low for myself. But then likely I probably could find a way to wiggle in, but I'd rather just go for the for sure way I know that will probably work. That is like a 90% chance instead of like a 50% chance of getting in. But that's what we're gonna do. We're just heading over here to the end of the valley. That's probably, probably not even a minute to the flight. So, because I mean, we are cruising at 160 knots true airspeed, adding an extra two miles to your flight doesn't really add that much time. All stations of Apollo Monday, 126 decimal seven, November Tango, Kilo 10 miles to the north. On descent passing 4,500, circuit time, Malamunda 42. Yeah, I'm glad I'm going this way now, because if I would have gone down there, now just looking at it, the clouds just completely cover. There's some heavy rain right on the very, very tops of it, or just really, really dark clouds. It's kind of hard to tell. Dark, dark clouds and rain look the same here. All right, my alert was just flashing just a second ago, and I had forgotten to turn it back on because I was busy doing other things, so that's why I set that up and flipped it back on. Now my fuel is even. There's autopilot off. Caution, terrain. Oh yes, thank Caution, you. terrain. And we'll turn off our taws. It does look like there's maybe some rain in the valley. We'll see, let's go ahead and put this on the bigger map so I can see a little bit better. It does look like there is some sprinkles in there. We got a 4%. Again, if we do need to go around, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73, left hand turn out. Once we get closer, we'll see how far we can see up in there. Set up our OBS for runway 08. 500. Oh good, this is the wrong valley. I've got one more to go. <laughs> nice. This is my false valley. Okay, so I just have over the next hill, so that's really good, because that is, yeah, kind of raining in there. And we got one more valley to go once I get up to the river. If you guys want to fly the same flight on your home sim or something, um, I'll leave this same flight in uh, on my Patreon page, uh, giving you like the altitudes that I flew out here at, and the direction and how long and I put some maps and some charts and things on there as well so you guys can actually fly this as well so if you are interested check out the link down below um, in the description all right selectors and brakes are good Taws is turned off our v-ref we've already set up we flip it back on 67 knots our landing light is on our pulse lights on and our bypass is in our inertia separator is in bypass Looks like our valley is perfectly beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so abort and emergency, we've already talked about our prop and our harness. We're eight miles out. We'll get that in just a minute. We'll get our SAR as well here shortly. So our valley is sunny and just with some scattered clouds in here. So I got down a little bit below pattern altitude just so I could get underneath those clouds. Now we're just climbing back up to 3,150 feet. And my runway is at the end, so here I'm just following this river up right now. And we'll follow the river all the way up, and it will go right by the airstrip. All stations of Malamanda, Koyak, November Tango, Kilo is in the circuit, Malamanda. I'm on HF. Bidang 6538, November Tango, Kilo. No, Kilo, go ahead. November Tango, Kilo is in the circuit, Malamanda, cancel SAR. Kilo. Oh, that's kilo. All right, so like I was saying a little bit earlier is you can see up here off to the left and all these mountains around here, all the clouds are just touching the tops of the mountains and there's absolutely no gaps under them. So I'm really glad that I didn't go all the way down there and try to muck around and have to come all the way back around. Again, it's completely clear above, so I could have gone at 8,000 and then just dropped all the way down in. But that's just a pain to have to do that. So, all right, we're over top of the field now, nearly. So we've got our SAR done. We're gonna go ahead and pop our, push our prop forward. We'll do harness here shortly and reduce the power to around 800 foot-pound of torque. 
and that's once we get 800 pound of torque, 10 degrees of flaps, it's going to give us really close to around 100 knots, which is a more manageable speed for the pattern. So 67 on final, 77 on base, 87 on downwind. 10 degrees of flaps below 138 knots. All right. Uh, it definitely does look wet. I was just in here last week and it was super slippery. I'm going to try to touch down on the first cones in, which is a, the very, very first cones or the end of the runway. Next set of cones look to be actually a little bit before that, right where the dark dirt pile is, is where I'd like to actually touch down, which is just a tiny bit before the windsock. Other than that, I don't see anybody on the runway. All right, harness is done, flaps to go. I'm gonna go 20 degrees of flaps now. It's because this pattern is a bit odd. Going to 87 knots. We want 2,800 feet turning base. 136, no, 2,600 turning final, which is, let's say, 20, 2,700 at that hill, because this, again, this isn't really quite your standard pattern. All right, slowing down to 87. There's 27, there's 87, nearly. Going down to 77. And we'll do flaps full shortly. All right, we're 500 feet above the field at this point. We go straight ahead over the 500. Trees. A really short final. So I'll do full flaps now. Checklist is complete. A three knot tailwind. We want 67. A little bit high. Turning final. Four knots tailwind, going to 67. Okay, four knots tailwind committed to land. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate you guys helping my channel grow, and it gives me, uh, it helps the algorithm a lot. Uh, if you guys do give it a thumbs up, if you guys leave a comment down below, it also really does help my channel grow, so I really do appreciate you guys doing that. Thank you for taking the time to watch it yet again, and uh, have a great day. And there's a bunch of little kids out here today. Always, everywhere we go, there's a whole posse of kids. Right, now it's getting slippery. All right, turn our blowers off, landing light off, strobes off, aux bus, and pump, generator, alternator. That's below, or that's not in beta. Go ahead and cut off. And below 38%, go ahead and feather it. All right, guys, thanks again for taking the time. Have a good one. See you next time.